Hello everyone, welcome to our daily devotion. Now I know this is extremely late, but I had an extremely late morning this morning. As many of you know, if you've seen the videos, I spent yesterday at Carowinds, which is a theme park, with my children and my grandchildren. And, um, you know, the Lord used that to give me inspiration for today's devotion. But, um, we were there late last night, and... You know, when you get so tired, you just can't sleep. That's how I was last night. And then I didn't fall asleep till early in the morning. And then I woke up late. <laughs> but I want to share with you some lessons. And I, 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 I take notes and I write things down and I search scripture. And when I do our devotions, I really want to put the time in it. Because I feel like whatever God leads me to, I want to do my 100% with it. But I call this my lessons learned from my grandchildren. And um, it starts out with in Proverbs. Now, I learn many things from my, from my grandchildren all the time. They never cease to amaze me. They're, they're, just, um, they're just great kids. And I love them very much. And I thank my children for giving me wonderful grandchildren. You know, when you make a decision to skip your duties for the day or whatever, to do something else, um, we sometimes feel guilty about it. Well, what I learned yesterday was that it's okay to shirk some things in place of spending time with people that you love, which I love my grandchildren. In Proverbs 17, 6, I never even knew this was in the Bible until I started looking. Proverbs 17, 6 says, Grandchildren are the crown of old men, or women in my case, <laughs> and the glory of sons is their father. You know what? God considered grandchildren so important that he included it in his word. And I don't feel bad for taking time off, even though... I'm late with everything else. And <clears throat> so that's one thing. God taught me that my grandchildren are important and I need to spend time with them. The second thing about time is spending time with my grandchildren. It's wonderful and we need to spend time with them and our children. But what does, what does the Bible say about spending time with your family or with those that you love? Well, one of the greatest examples is in um, Luke 10, verses 38 through 42. Now, this is an instance of when uh, Mary and Martha and the Lord came to see them. And, um, well, let's just see what it says. So, um, Luke 10, 38 through 42. Now, as they were traveling along, he entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed, in, welcomed him into her home. She had a sister called Mary, who was seated at the Lord's feet, listening to his word. But Martha was distracted with all her preparations, and she came up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Then tell her to help me. But the Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you were worried and bothered about so many things, but only one thing is necessary. For Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Wow. Now, who would have thought that spending time with my grandchildren would have led me to this? And I knew this story. I've read it many times. But just as is important to spend time with our family and our loved ones. It's important, more important to spend time with our Lord. So spending time with my grandchildren yesterday helped me remember to spend time with the Lord, to stop worrying about preparations and doing this and doing that and doing the other. You know, running around, trying to get things accomplished, keep things done, all in the name of the Lord and actually not getting what was done most importantly. And that was just spending time alone with my father. 
And had I not gone with my grandchildren yesterday, yes, I could have got all my work caught up. I could have got all my projects caught up. I could have gotten all this done. But the joy and the blessing that I would have received from not from spending time with them, I would have missed. And that is something that I couldn't even replace. I could never get back those memories that I made yesterday. So that was the second thing, spending time. The third thing that I learned from my grandchildren was about how to be a grandparent. Now that, that may sound kind of weird, but um, being a grandparent starts before you even have grandchildren. And it starts in the way that you raise your children. Do you raise your children um, up in the Lord? Do you, do you teach them the things that they need to know? Um, Proverbs 22, 6 says, Oops, I'm in the wrong thing. Huh, Proverbs, thank you. Proverbs 22, 6 basically says, Train child, bring your child up in the way of the Lord, and when he is old, he will never depart. And that's where you start training your children and preparing for your grandchildren. Because when we train our children to love the Lord, when we bring our children up with the Lord, when they get older, they may wander away temporarily, but they will never leave. And they will come back, and then they will begin raising your grandchildren in the ways that you taught them, in the ways of the Lord. So, it's really important to teach your children about God and how much He loves us, about Jesus and how He's our Savior, so that when our children do have children, they'll grow up in the ways of the Lord. And that's how we start preparing our grandchildren. That's how we become better grandparents, by starting with our own children. You know, it it's funny how God uses different things in my life in different situations to lead me to what He's trying to teach me for the day or for the hour or, or anything. You know, I was so worried about taking so much time yesterday to spend all day off with my grandchildren, but I am so glad I did because it was so worth it. The memories and stuff that I made can't, like I said, can't be replaced. But it's also important to take that time to spend with our Father, to take time to be still and to listen to His voice, to hear what He wants us to do, to love each other, and we can only do those things that He wants us to do by spending time alone with Him. Whether it's just being quiet and listening for that small wind whisper, or whether it's in prayer, or whether it's in His Word reading. For those are things, those are three ways that I learn most about the Lord. Remembering to be still and letting God speak to me. He doesn't always come, as we've seen in the Bible, in the fire and, um, you know, all these dramatic things, earthquakes and stuff. Sometimes it's just that still, small whisper. And we have to listen. And again, we learn about Him through prayer. Spending time with the Lord in prayer is one of the most precious things we can do. Our Lord loves to communicate with us. He loves to listen to us speak to Him. And then digging into His Word to learn more. You know, I used to think I needed all these Bible commentaries and different things like that, but I don't need that. Because when I read the Word, I let Scripture interpret Scripture. I let the voice of God direct me in what I need to know. Funny how spending the day with your grandchildren at an amusement park can give you the whole inspiration for a devotion. How God can use the little things in life to make you remember the important things in life. 
Thank you, my friends, for joining us. I know this is a little long today, but I really wanted to share what was on my heart. And um, as far as our prayers, we have lots of prayers to do. We need to be praying for the people in the Bahamas. The Bahamas have just totally been devastated by Hurricane Dorian. We need to be praying for the families there. We need to be praying for all of us on the coastlines um, in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. For here, they're saying Thursday night or thir sometime Thursday when we should be getting the full, you know, the most impact of it. Um, but we just don't know. Right now, it's been spinning over the Bahamas and it hasn't left. And that's, it's just been devastating over there. But we need to pray. God answers prayers. Be with those who are on our prayer list that I've mentioned before. Um, those who are sick. Uh, those who are hurting from losses in their family. And um, also, I wanted to add uh, Crystal, who was Nora's um, daughter, who really got a bad migraine headache on Sunday and it's still lingering around. Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of convinced that the barometric pressure and stuff that's going on is is really cr creating havoc with these migraines. I know I've been having them too, and I haven't had them in a long time. But be with Miss Crystal. Say a prayer for her that she will get relief from that soon, as well as Nora. And um, if there are any other prayer requests, please leave them below down in the comment section so that I can add you to the prayer list. And so that we can pray with you. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And I will see you all again tomorrow. Hopefully earlier for our daily devotion. God bless.